in its simplest terms, what we, what we give our brands is a point of view, a really clear point of view on what's the problem that they're solving for their clients. And that's, you know, never lose sight of that. And, um, and we, find, we try to find really just ways through language um, and insight that get you to something that's just interesting. Um, and I think one of the things that we're really good at is um, we just know we know, we know what it takes to get a creative excited. And I think that comes back to my product design roots, is that you need a creative hook. What we're interested in is um, finding a clear space in a market. And when you talk about a clear space, just think about somebody's mind, because brands are basically a shorthand for what you recall in your head. When you say Nike, when you say Apple, you know, all those ones, it then triggers something in your brain. And what we're trying to do is to find that space in the market or space in your head, inside your head where you go, there's that, that brand, that business is associated with a set of values and a meaning which no one else has or can own. Now, I reckon there are, in any given market, there are broadly four positions. Got a leader position. It's usually first, you know, they've got first to market advantage. Then you've got a customer service from brand, which is just doing what the leader originally did. They spent the money on the innovation. They just packaged it up in a much more friendly, customer orientated way. Then, as markets mature, you get a no frills budget proposition. And then the fourth one would be a challenger, somebody who's very narrow in what they do, and they'll just go after a part of the market. They're just they're different type of personalities types. So, you know, if you are um, if you're a leader, you can get away with a whiff of arrogance because you're sort of talking about you've got some proprietorial proprietorial technology or something a really tangible USP that you've invested in to create it. Um, and so, you know, it's quite clear what you're trying to do if you're. If you're a customer champion, it becomes more emotive. You start being, you know, you're much friendlier, you're warmer as a brand. If you're, if you're, if you're playing in that budget space, it's no frills. It's really direct. There are there's certain behaviours and attributes that all of them have. Um, are any of them easier? I mean, the thing is, is that people who are just playing on budget um, very rarely come to a brand consultancy. So um, they probably do it themselves because you know, they don't like paying fees, but um, for everyone, so, but for any, for any of the others, um, I'd say not, no one of them was easier. They're all interesting. So I'll give you an example of it. Ocado come to us and go, we need, um, we're launching a pet store, um, online pet store. When we went and looked at the market, um, everyone's really rational. Um, so pets at home, market leader. You then go, well actually, let's go and look at what customers want. And you look at what, how many cats and dogs there are in the UK, eight million of each. You know, the family might have been eating bread and water, but Tiddles was still on his gourmet cat food. And we start going, you know, there's a real emotional connection. Britain, you know, dogs won and Britain's got talent twice. That's how much we love our pets, our animals. And we start going, right, well, you know, let's think about it differently. So the idea around that was we got to, and, and it's the promise, I mean, we talk about a promise, it's this unbreakable bond between you and your customers. That's what we're trying to get it down to. So of course, there's a load of thinking that sits behind it, but for Ocado and their pet store fetch, the perfect pet parent. Now, okay, it's got some alliteration in there, but it starts immediately you thinking, going, you know, so there's parrots in the, in the work saying, because I'm worth it, you know, and it's just, you give a voice to the animals, it becomes really emotional. And the whole idea was, we want to be this, this emotional, this emotional pet store that really sort of acknowledges this bond that we have. And so we're looking at what are the conventions within categories? How can we, how can we zag when everyone else is zigging? How can we stand out? And, and that's, that's when we're at our best and we don't really give up until we get there. So we're just going, let's find it. You know, where is that opportunity to really offer people something which isn't doing it? I think too often, too many people just, 
they look go and talk to the client and they look for the bit that they think is um, is the most interesting and they amplify it you know if we don't think our clients have got what it takes to really own that clear defendable territory then we help them to build it because it has to so as much as it being this clear space you've got it's got to be credible and so we spend a lot of time with our clients building you know changing their propositions building their products helping them to move the culture of their organization so um, how do they really you know live and breathe this stuff and help to deliver it rather than it just being a piece of graphic design um, you know it's much it's it, you know it's, it's more than that you know that's what a brand is